I could tell when Tyson was walking down the stairs what type of mood he was in. That was a difficult one. How did you start that journey with Tyson? So that fight that I was saying about when I done my first world title fight at 24, mm -hmm. fight week, Tyson come down for the full fight week and saw me doing some work with Billy Joe and I, he was a bit like, started asking questions and and uh, I think was just impressed with what he sort of saw. He knew before that Billy Joe was sort of down at the weights so a while people looked and went, oh, that was a bad performance, that was Ben's fault. He already knew the situation before the fight took place. And then we were sort of in contact and then me and Billy Joe went over to Marbella for a training camp. Billy Joe said to me, do you mind if Tyson comes over? I said, no, no problem. And when he come over, after the first session, he was like, right, do you want to be my new coach? And I was like, most people at 24, 24, or 25, one or two, 24, I think, yeah, uh, would be like, yeah, you know, 100%. I was like, whoa, take your time. Like, you don't have to rush into a decision like this. We can keep working. If you're happy with it, then we'll see. If not, you know, you don't have to. This was when he was 28 stone? Yeah. And he was actually a little bit lighter at the time. He gained some weight after this. And I sort of said, you know, you achieved a lot with your uncle. Like, you don't have to rush into any decisions. And then after a few sessions, he had already made his mind up, you know. Um, and then he had to go back. The plan was to, to go, for him to go back to England, sort a few bits out, then come back over and carry on training. Never happened. He went even heavier. Um, we was in contact bits and bobs, and he just randomly messaged me one day in the gym and was like, I'm ready, are you ready? I was like, ready for what? He was like, I'm ready to start. Like, I said, what, so you want me to, you want to commit to me being your trainer? He was like, yep, this, that, and the other. And I was up and had a fighter helping Tony Bellew at the time prepare for the David Hay Great fight. Great big guy. Love Tony, show yeah. to Tony. And um, I was like, right, so I'm staying in Sheffield for a week or two weeks or whatever it was, I can't remember. I was like, I can meet you over at Hatton's, which is about halfway, um, to do some sessions three times a week or whatever. So we started off doing that. After a couple of weeks, he was like, look, I need to do this full time. So... Then I moved in with him and I remember turning up at the house <laughs> and uh, knocking on the door. I didn't know this at the time, but like probably a year down the line or 10 months down the line, I was talking to Paris and she was like, he never told me. He was <laughs> <laughs> Just knocked on the door. He was like, oh, by the way. Ben's moving in. Yeah. She was like, what? Uh -huh. uh, some stranger moving in. Like, Was she just happy though that it was getting help? It must have been a difficult time for seeing him, a big, strong man, king of the world, Klitschko. Won all the belts, had all the money, had all the fame, but then hitting the biggest depression in his life. And I always use Tyson Fury as an example how when you achieve those goals and you think it's going to complete you, it's going to fulfil all the emptiness when you realise when you get it, that it ain't fuck all. And that's when people can slip. But for a man to come back from 28 stone and achieving, you're a massive part of that. So I take my hat off to you. I don't know if you get the credit that you deserve for actually what you've done and to absorb all that energy, to feel mm. those emotions and to go through that journey as well. Because when he's struggling... You then struggle, so it's then your job to give him that inspiration. When he was talking about getting back to fights and stuff, what were you thinking seriously when he was 28 stone? Were you thinking, mm, did you have doubt? Or were you thinking it's Tyson Fury? Like, his mindset is different. I see it, other people who see things see it. Like, when he says something, he means it. People don't necessarily get it. So when he was saying to you, I'm coming back, anybody else at 28 stone's thinking, nah, you're full of shit. What were you thinking? Yeah, at the time, he had, he had some doubts. And I remember sort of um, at one point he said I think this is the first time he was over in my bay he was like my biggest worry is doing a comeback getting myself back in shape doing a comeback just not having it because what is taking out of me this comeback and the inactivity getting beat or something like that and then people go ah oh, it was a fluke that night against Klitschko that was like something I can't have that so I need to take my time with this and I imagine for Paris it was probably well I don't know what this person's about I never met this person um but after a little while, obviously, you get to know everybody, and I got to know Tyson more. And if I'm honest, I used to look across and think, I don't know if this is possible, but I got to know him, got to know the family. I thought, but if I can make this man happy again, that's it, even if he doesn't box again, I've done a good job, a fucking good job. And he was all over the place at first, and so one minute it was, I want to take four fights. Now, I took the deal on, I took the agreement to do this on him having four warm-up fights. Um, 
And then there was times where you go, oh, forget the warm-up fights. I, I don't love boxing no more. Because obviously it was tough. The emotions of going through a training camp, the emotions of having to lose all, the, all this weight, um, which was going to take time. It'd be like, oh, forget the warm-up fights. I'm just going to take a big fight. If I got it, I've got it. If I ain't, I ain't. And I remember sitting around the table, actually, with um, Tyson and Paris, and he said something along those lines. And I sort of finished my foot, put it to the side and walked into my room. And I could hear through the door, he went to Paris, what's up with him? And she went, he's not here for that. He's not here to have one big fight and earn some money and go, oh, if you do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. I've earned a few quid off it. What does it matter? And uh, he came in and went, what's up? I went, I'm not interested, mate. If you want to walk into what, I took this agreement to four warm-up fights. I said, if you go, you want to have one big fight, like, I'm not the man for this job. I'm not interested. Like, I don't care. Oh, you'll earn a few quid. Not interested. Don't care. I know, I know I'm going to earn money because I know I'm good at my job. Um, and I think that for him was like, okay, like, this person's actually in it for the long run. Like, and it gave him a bit of confidence in what I want and... Or just using them. Yeah, exactly. And the initial going through the business side of things to get the, the deal for the comeback and everybody wanted a piece of it. And Well, you've agreed to this before, but then I've still got one fight with you. I've still got a contract with you. All of this was causing him a lot of stress because you already had all the stress of this comeback, never mind all the stress of the business side of things. But once he got the... Once he got the um, the sort of... That all that that sort of things in place, then a lot of the stress and worry went away. But he he had a um, so his first bar, he was like, I thought right, get him a steady bit of spine, let him move around, nothing too intense, you know, let him get used to a few things. And he wanted to spar Lucas Brown. Someone phoned up about Lucas Brown a bit of sparring, and I thought. Rather him just move about. Not the Lucas Brown is great, but he can punch a bit. And I was like, let's just, you know, have a move about first. Get someone else. He, ah, I'll be all right. You won't be all right. Went back, sparred, timing, everything. Like, the things that you would think would be off, time and distance, he was just playing around. Like, everything was still there. And I thought, interesting. Um, and then as time went on, sparring more and more. But he was very up and down. And I think... Again, a big part of my job, old head on young shoulders. People wouldn't expect that type of dynamic. My thing was, I sort of used to look at it as they're, they're the guidelines. If he goes above that, I know he's going to crash. If he goes below that, not good. If we can sit him in between these two guidelines, quite balanced, like we're doing well. So there'd be moments, he's very easily influenced, Tyson, very easily influenced, like a big kid really at times. <laughs> and um, like you just wouldn't expect someone that big, achieve what he's achieved such a character to be so easily influenced but if you went literally I always say this if you if you he went I could run through that wall it would start off as a joke but do you know if I went I think you can all of a sudden it'd be <laughs> I can he would actually believe <laughs> mm -hmm. it you know but I used to purposely do things like he'd go I'm strong or this or that messing about and I'd go you can't do 10 reps without weight and he'd go yeah Watch mm -hmm. this then. And I'd get that extra step out of him. Um, and then there was, I was so, I found, I, I thought it was so important to get away from home, get into warm weather, get him in a good mood to get to Marbella. Part of me taking on this job was to, for the agreement that we were going to go away to Marbella to get him away from everything, just focus on getting some, crashing a bit of weight off early, giving him time to rest and recover from crashing the weight, let his body get back to normal, then going to a warm up fight. And he was a bit against the going to my back. He's out of your comfort zone. You know what I mean? He's thinking, I can do this from home. And I remember while we was having this discussion, we was getting ready to go for a run and the kids were screaming, oh, I want to come, I want to come. I was thinking, this is why, you know? And we set out, but he lives along sort of the seafront. So we went out for a run. Crashed the wind and the rain and the, everything from the sea crashing in. And the kids, ah, oh, scooters broke, screaming, got a mile up the road. I was like, look, this is why I'm saying we need to get away, like just fully focus on on yourself, get doing what needs to be done rather than this will end up taking 12, 14, 18 weeks when we can get big results out of six weeks and then calming things back down. No, no, no. And then all of a sudden you turn around, I booked it. 
but what? We're going tomorrow. And I was like, tomorrow? Uh, yeah, and we're driving. But what are we driving for? Ah, he's, he's saying this to me. Don't worry about it. This side of, of, of uh, this side, like, England will be the worst part of the journey. Once we get through to the other side, it'll be easy. I'm thinking, okay, get up in the morning, set off. Within two hours, ah, oh, let's just turn around. He's <laughs> going. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, you said to me, uh -huh. this, this be, yeah, that's an 18 hour be, drive. Yeah, you said to me that England's going to be the hard part. And then once we got through to the other end, sorry, we stopped off at um, stopped off at a petrol station, and he sort of said to me, listen, listen, I can only apologise. You, um, I just, you know, let's turn around. He's getting thought, scared. I don't know what it was. I think it was just a case of. The drive was difficult. Knew it was. It was the journey was like the journey. The journey. Even was, his kids and family as well. His missus is his rock as well. You know she I mean? was. She come with us. They oh, come she? with us. But we was in was a the car. Kids there as well. The kids were there. Yeah. <laughs> and he had he had the little one at the time screaming every time we phoned through from the car. Mm -hmm. So I was in a different car, and it was a bit like the journey. Like the first, he had already said this to me. England, the journey part of England to get down to the to the uh, Euro Tunnel was going to be the difficult part. And I felt like, you know, the first stage of this comeback was going to be the difficult part. And we got to, I think we got across actually to France and he was like, look, I can only apologise. I'll pay you, what you whatever you want for your time that you've put in. He said, but look, let's just go. He actually said, let's just go to Disneyland for a couple of days and turn around. And I was like, I didn't come here for this. Like, we're going to stick it through. Like, we're going to get there. Oh, let's see how we feel in the morning. And Tyson's brother, Huey, um... I got out of the car, face like a smack task, and he was like, what's up with him? He was like, he's come to do what, what needs to be done. Like, we knew that this was ahead of us. We need to get there and get to work. And he was like, oh, see how we feel in the morning. Obviously, woke up in the morning, better mood, got going again. Um, and I remember that as soon as the sun, this is my thing, get him in the sun, good environment, healthy, clean. I think it's probably a lot cleaner to live cleaner in a warm weather scenario. And... It'd been negative, 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 negative. It was almost like the sun, boof, hit the car, phone through. Oh, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> I was like, this fella's off his trolley. <laughs> and once we got over there, you know, it was, uh, it was really good results. Day to day, he was always up and down. Um, but like I say, the key was to try and keep him in the guidelines. Um, and then he had the two comeback fights. Who was it, his first comeback fight? Were you nervous? Because there was a lot of hype about it. Yeah, I, I think... I sort of, I sort of thought we knew what to sort of expect. Like it was more about the showy event. He wasn't quite, if I'm being honest, mentally stable at that point. It was more about the event than the actual fight. Like the fight was never going to be competitive, you know. Um, but people love to criticise, you know. So people was expecting a barnstormer of a fight, and it just wasn't the case. It was a comeback fight, almost to signal, you know, positive things yeah. are ahead. It, it's going to happen. Who was it before getting in the ring? Yeah, one thing I say about Tyson is I I think he probably feels more pressure fighting someone that he's just completely expected to, to be than he does when he's fighting someone that people are like, hmm, I don't know if he can do this. Um, that must be that gypsy blood because Billy Joel's the same. Like, yeah. They up their levels tenfold that nobody thinks they've got those levels and they put that. I feel as if they two are constantly proving people wrong their whole boxing career. I don't think... That, even though they get the respect off a lot of people, but I think they should get a lot more for actually what they've achieved. They're still being, I think, is it both 30 and all? I don't know. They're both 30 and all. They're both, yeah. like, they're both are unbelievable for what they've achieved. And and again, but when you watch the fights, like, I don't fucking know. I'm not a coach, but you kind of see when it's the ones they expect to beat, they kind of take the foot off the gas a bit, but when it's against the big names, your clutch goes, your Canelo's coming up, like, they go through levels and the training seems to go through the roof, which is a good thing. But when you were there, because it always seems like a showman in the changing room, Tyson before a fight, showing off and that, was that any signs of that, the first fight, the comeback fight? Yeah, to a, to a degree, the comeback fight was like everybody wanted their face on camera and the changing room was full up and it was a bit of a circus really, if I'm honest. Um, How does that irritate you? Yeah, because I think, well, nobody else matters. I don't matter. Nobody matters other than the fighter. I've always believed this. Like, if you want to be the star, do the fighting. Do you know what I mean? Earn it. Um, so it was a little bit of a... But then that was why I remember we sort of said, look, you know, the next fight's a bit more of a... 
not a competitive fight when he's at his peak, but during the comeback, lost a lot of weight. Still, had lost a lot of weight between the first fight and the next fight. You know, it was it was going to make it more of a competitive fight. Is that Quartz? Is that who? That, that was against a guy called um, Pianetta. Pianetta, and then who was after that? Was it Quartz? Who's the guy? Quartz? Wilder. Wilder, and then Tom Schwartz. Schwartz, yeah, Schwartz. So you had Wilder. So Wilder was only the third fight, not the fourth. No, so the agreement was four warm-up fights, yeah. and then. Um, even going into the Pianetta fight, it was like talk to this because Wilder come to the fight. There was talk of this Wilder fight. I openly said, you know, I think, you know, not that he couldn't win it, but you was really diminishing the percentages, like making it more narrow than it needed to be. Why would Wilder take that fight? He thought it's a name. I blow this fella away and got a good name on my record. That's mm -hmm. what he thought. Tried to get get him in quick. Because you know? looking from the outside, that you'd think it was a bit of liberty. Tyson just coming back after three years, two warm up fights, and then to fight. One of the best knockout artists, man, in the boxing game. Like, he was no mug, do you know what I mean? But then, what was your training when they took that fight? What were you thinking? Did you ever try and stop that? Were you thinking? Yeah, I'd, I openly said, like, this is a step... Too early? Yeah, like, you're just diminishing the percentages and making it closer than what it needs to be. And... He was adamant that he wants to do it, you know? This is, this is what I want to do. And... Do you think that's the, the addiction habit as well? Where not tr we spoke here, try to constantly prove people wrong, but he his self belief that he can run through a wall, yeah. he probably would. That do you think that's what he needs though? That the one that nobody thinks he could win because he's just came back to then make him progress and kick on and prove people wrong. Yeah, I don't know because right. that's a bit psychotic yeah. to then go. Well, fuck it, I'm going to take the undefeated fighter. Knocked out everybody that he's fought. Three fights back after a three-year layoff. So in terms of boxing side of things, I thought you're making this a closer fight than it needs to be. A lot more. If you just take your time and have another fight or two. Take more so time for your body to recover from the weight loss. Um, but what I will say, in terms of overall, I think it was the best thing that could have happened to him. Not the actual fight and the performance, but the pressure and the, okay, you know, I've got focus on what's ahead of me and, and the job that's coming up I've got a goal rather than losing a bit of weight got this fella that I can box I know I can beat him but there was no complete I need to be 100% focused for this whereas going into the Wilder fight I just think that that really helped his mind he had a focus had something he knew he needed to do there was a bit of pressure on him and made him mentally a lot more stable going into that fight and then obviously what happened in the fight just turned him into a megastar should have won the fight, man. Should have he should have won, won the fight. fight. Do you think that's because fight. he was in America? He was always wary of that. Always wary of that. Um, and actually, it's funny because we was like arguing. We want an English judge. We want an English judge. We want an English judge in there. One American, one one English, and one neutral. But it was the English judge that scored it a draw. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a case. Yeah. Of, um, Do you see a lot of that in boxing? Or like two mega stars fighting? Is there a lot of that? kind of corruption with scorecards it seems to be getting not like worse, how, how someone can score that 116 one yeah. to wild i just can't i don't know how you can come to that what were you thinking when tyson get put down in the last i genuinely thought it was over like when a fighter goes down they're going to get up usually something is moving they are moving whether it's their hands moving their foot's moving he was just still it took him four seconds before boom okay i don't know whether he was out I don't know if he was going, okay, take my time. One thing that, that was funny, in the prep preparation for that, he kept saying, and I'm so uh, adamant about this, he kept on saying to us, to the sparring partners, if I get put down, it's okay, I've been there before. I'll wait till the eight count, then I'll get up. I'm experienced. And if he hits me flush, I probably will go down. That reality... I think was why he was able to get up. I think it was a case of he'd said it so many times, it was subconsciously in his mind of if I go down, I'll wait for the eight count, then I'll get up. And he'd said it so many times, I thought he was probably subconsciously, well, okay. Then the ref was counting in his face, and it was a case of now I'll get up. Whereas if he hadn't have been realistic with himself, he was confident but realistic. And that was the important part of if I get it clean, good chance I go over. Um, what are you thinking then though if you're thinking he's won six, seven rounds in front that he's cleared that eight rounds and then he gets put in his ass in the last what are you thinking so at the time I thought to myself like, they, like there's people going oh you know 
at the time, people was like, oh, he got the tactics right. But there definitely was moments where he could have pressed the pace against Wilder. But my whole thing going into the fight is I don't know what the fuel tank's got. I don't know what the fuel tank's got. We haven't had 12 elite rounds that he's fought or we've not had four one white fights picking it up, picking it up, picking it up and I can go, right, this is what's in the tank. This is where we're at. I thought to myself, I don't know how he's going to do the round. So at times where he could have probably pushed the pace, I'm thinking we need to be safe here and gradually because gassing out and standing in front of Wilder is not an ideal place to be at all. So for me, it was a case of we need to be efficient um, and control the pace because I didn't know, being completely honest, I can sit here and go, yeah, this, yeah, that. Like at the time, I didn't know if he had 12 elite rounds in the tank after the weight loss and this kind of things. Um, and I'd actually said to him in the corner, when you dip that, like you drop him down to your right, you need to step in, drive your shoulder into him and tie him up, not just dip, because there's a chance you get caught dipping and get caught down there. I said to him this a couple of rounds, and that was why he got clipped the first time as well, because he dipped down rather than close the distance or dip down, take half a step back. He didn't adjust distance. He just dipped down, got clipped up the back of the head. And the same thing happened in, in, for the last knockdown. He dipped down, didn't smother or step back, just dipped, thinking Wilder's going to punch six foot past. But by this point, Wilder had anticipated he was going to drop down there, boom, boom, and caught him on the way down there. I was thinking at the point, why? I was thinking to myself, God, why? Why have you took us this far to then do this now, you know? And then the whole get up thing, I just feel like that was just meant to happen. It was like the whole story of, I got knocked down, I got back up again about his whole journey. And then it actually happened in a sporting moment in the fight. And that moment will forever go beyond sport because it's just a sign of, he didn't just sit there going, yeah, if you get knocked down, get back, you got to get back up, you got to fight on like, it actually happened. Mm -hmm. He said it and he did it. And yeah. for so many people, like, I've got thousands and thousands and thousands of messages of, type of people saying, um, I took so much inspiration from that. It's that that moment in boxing saved my Lives. son's life. So, yeah, yeah, one million percent it did. I know mm -hmm. for a fact it did. It's phenomenal, man. And that's why he's so loved. But you've still got to get credit for the journey that you've went because he could have probably quit numerous occasions when you were there and he might never have been back in a boxing ring again. How did you absorb that? Were you going with a game plan then for... Okay, we've got four matches. How are you thinking with his eating and drinking? I don't know if he was drinking in, but were you going in, in the mental battle to keep pushing him? What was your plan? Were you just going in and winging it and seeing what you could do? Or did you have a strategy? Yeah, I did have a strategy. It was a case of, right, if we go into intent straight away, I'm never going to do it. Like, Maidana tried to make a comeback. From the training that I saw, I thought, like, you're training like you've got a fight around the corner, like, three weeks out from a fight, but you're a million miles away, you're dropping a bit of weight. You don't need to do that because you're going to think, well, it's tough to do that for 12 weeks of a training camp. So never mind doing it for six months to get a bit of weight off. Um, so my whole thing was, he doesn't need to work that hard to get the weight off at first with how big he is. Then give him a little rest period once the weight comes off, let him get a bit of rest, let the body recover a little bit. Then pick up the intensity for the first training camp. And then gradually, like I say, pick up the opponent and the levels of the opponents as we went on to see where, where he's at and gauge you know, how his body's recovering. Um, but, you know, he, he, he took that while to fight soon. What about the the run? You took him in the mountains, you were going to walk up or something? But yeah, we, uh, there was a run, there was a run that we used to do in Marbella called the Istan Mountain. And I thought to myself, he was on a ketogenic diet at this point. And I thought to myself, we don't need to, run up it again intensity hasn't got to be mad at the minute like the boxers do that for their fight camp I'm thinking let's just take a walk up it one of the fellas can drive in the car walk up drive back down good workout but not too intense so he got out of the car stretching I'm thinking well, whatever's this lunatic doing a little loosening himself up boom starts jogging I thought it's going to last five minutes here and then he'll start walking anyway keeps going five minutes later I'm thinking it won't be too much longer keeps going won't be too much longer, keeps going. The whole way up, then starts sprinting halfway through. I'm thinking, this fella's off his trolley. <laughs> eh? Got a few young lads around him as well. Then he's pushing them on. Then I was like, right, we're at, we're at the top now once we was there. And uh, he went, is this where everyone stops? Yeah, I went, yeah. He went, the Gypsy King don't stop here. Then he went, we're going all the way up to the top. So he just had to do that a little bit more than everybody else. And I thought, there's something about him. Not boxing ability, but there's something about him in there. 
and up there. Yeah, that's what separates the weak from the strong. I believe though that that's how he's made the comeback that he's done to 100%. be the, the most spoke about boxer on the planet just now. Do you know what I mean? It's a it's a phenomenal achievement and. When you were going through that, then when he fought, he'd won the fight. Did that try and did that affect him? Because he seemed quite calm when it get called a draw. He was very calm. Why is that? Was he just happy to be back? Yeah, I think he thought. You know what? You know, everybody, everybody was like, he's getting blown away in three or four rounds. Like that is it. Even his dad was like, you're getting blown away. He's going to get blown away. Like shouldn't be taking the fight. I agreed. He was diminishing the percentage chances. Um, but I knew. We ain't getting blown away. Don't get me wrong. If Wilder landed something early, it could have happened. Because if he hits anyone flush at any point in the fight, it can end. But I thought to myself, we need to land something substantial early to make Wilder go, Shh, you're not walking at me. Because Tyson can punch. He can. And he landed something at the end of the first round as if to say to him, if you're reckless, you'll get clipped yourself. And that, we needed that. That was like, you better respect me and made a little bit hesitant, made him bite on the feints. Um, so of course there was a game plan going into it but I just feel like that was all that was all meant to happen the way the fight went the knockdown in the end the getting back up the controversial decision it all mm. then led to the top ranked ESPN deal um, and that really took him to another level even though it was a draw it took him to another level does that still burn you? it does yeah it does 100% um, I'd be a liar if I said it didn't but again like I said I just feel like it was meant to be